In our previous video, we looked at atomic orbitals and their quantum numbers, exploring how orbitals represent 3D regions in space with a high likelihood of finding electrons. We learned that with an increasing number of electrons, different quantum numbers yield various orbital shapes, each defining an electron state in an atom, essentially its energy and probable location. These states in their most stable forms are known as the atom's ground state electron configuration. The principles guiding this configuration are the Aufbau principle, the Pauli exclusion principle and Hund's rule, which we'll talk about later in this video. So let's start by understanding what a ground state electron configuration actually is. Imagine tossing a ball into the air. It falls back to the ground due to gravity's pull towards a stable, low energy state. Electrons behave similarly within atoms, being pulled into a low energy stable position. However, a more precise description would be that atomic forces increase the probability density of electrons in these low energy positions or lowest energy orbitals. These stable electron arrangements are what we term the ground state, sort of like electrons finding the best seat in a room, often nearest to the nucleus. So how do we depict this ground state electron configuration? We use the electron configuration system, which involves three steps, determining the principal quantum number or shell number, the angular momentum number L or subshell letter and the number of electrons in each subshell. So for example, take hydrogen. We start with the principal quantum number, which in this case is one. Next, we determine that it has an L value of zero. So it falls into the S subshell. And lastly, there is one electron in its one S subshell, leading us to the configuration of one S one. And the number of electrons is a superscript. The periodic table offers a visual guide to understand electron configurations. Each row or period corresponds to the highest principal quantum number of an atom's electrons in the ground state. So for the first row, we have n equals 1. For the second, we have n equals 2, and so on. Moving left to right across a period, electrons fill the atom's outermost shell or valence shell one by one until it's complete. The columns or groups house elements with similar electron configurations and therefore similar chemical properties. So for example, the noble gases are all very stable because they have a full principal shell and a similar electron configuration pattern. The periodic table is also segmented into blocks of subshells. The S block, the P block, the D block and the F block. And this is useful for understanding how many electrons go into each subshell. So for example, for S, we have two atoms and therefore two electrons can fit into this subshell. For P, we have six, so six electrons can fit in. The electron filling order is governed by three main rules. The first being the Aufbau principle, where electrons fill the lowest energy orbitals first, as seen in this image. And this also makes more sense when we apply it to the periodic table. The next rule is the Pauli exclusion principle, determining that each orbital holds a maximum of up to two electrons with opposite spins, because no two electrons can have the same set of quantum numbers. Lastly, Hund's rule says that electrons fill unoccupied orbitals before pairing up as shown in the following diagram. There are exceptions to this rule, particularly when it comes to D and F orbitals, but this will be discussed in later videos. So an example of all this being put together is carbon, which has an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2 and 2p2. So a convenient convention for electron configurations is using the noble gas symbol in square brackets to represent the inert electron configuration for a row. For example, take sodium with the configuration 1s2, 2s2, 
2P6 3S1. It can be written as NE 3S1, where NE represents the configuration of Neon, which is 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, and you can see how this cancels out. So below you'll find a table using this convention showcasing a range of ground state electron configurations that have been experimentally verified. So to summarize, the application of electron configuration conventions to atoms, whether it's in molecules or individually, allows us to determine orbital arrangements and energy levels. This is not only a quick and valuable piece of information about an atom improving our predictive capabilities, but it also offers an intuitive way to understand and quantify the significance of an electron's state. So that's about it. Thank you for watching. Until next time.